Hello, hello everyone, Alexander here, and welcome to the Terrain Editor for Total War Warhammer Assembly Kit Beta. Just a brief overview of what to expect and give you a little bit of a head start in producing content, I guess. I mean, I won't exactly call myself the most amazing uh, example of uh, prowess in creating maps, but I did have a go at it myself. And I think it's fairly easy to pick up, even for people with not as much knowledge in creating content for games as it is. So you might as well just give it a go. So you're going to want to open it by going to Plugins and Terry, which is the terrain editor, of course. To wait for that to load. And I'm just going to show you a quick map that I've made, which is going to be shown off by uh, Total War Live on Twitch. Hopefully that is, I sent it over to Darren, he mentioned that it was going to be there. So here we are, I've loaded it up. So it's pretty simple actually, not too much going on. I made a map based off uh, Dwarven Wall kind of ruins and just something a bit more interesting to go about. Even had a go at adding some uh, kind of uh, wreckage, like times of Dwarven past there. Some towers and these are all just assets that you can find in the game painted in some little bit of terrain detail some hills some ditches stuff like that and thought about flanking areas and the like so yeah the only thing that I did with this I actually manually um, create no-go zones for the AI because before you could just walk through so it's just stuff like that trying to play around finding out what goes on so if I click the world this will show almost what it'll look like in game you can zoom in here to practically play a level so it's pretty nice you can see all the assets there and what I use trying to make it look like it is so I'm gonna show you quickly how you might create your own so initially you're going to want to do file and new Choose your vista, which you can change later on. So let's choose something a bit brighter, Bretonia 1. Okay, so here we are at a new map, just after I showed you quickly one that I created earlier. So you are presented with this figure here, which basically shows you the size of a soldier. To show you some scale of a map, obviously you zoom out and yep, you can't even see the soldier anymore. This is how big you can create your map if you desire. So yeah, we'll probably get straight into it. So we can just paint some terrain if we like. Uh, you usually start on add, so I can add some hills just by clicking and dragging or doing whatever, just trying to create some interest in the terrain, you don't exactly want to have flat map entirely, or unless you want to do that, that's fine. And maybe let's just subtract some areas to try and create a bit more depth and uh, excitement in the map per se. So yeah, basic terrain going on there. So if I want to click the world, you can see basically that uh, there's some gentle hills and different terrain areas to go by and obviously it shows you kind of what the exterior terrain is going to look like because we can't edit that that's just editing by the warscape engine itself cool so I'll zoom back out click back to the general editor so we can see what we're doing cool so yeah some of the camera controls are mainly similar to what you're used to in the total war battle or the battle replay so you zoom in with your scroll wheel, WASD to move around, shift to speed up how you do it, um, alt and middle mouse to rotate the camera around, you've got Z to zoom extends to zoom out, so say I was like really staring into the uh, middle here and I was like oh crap I need to get out quickly I don't want to, so there you go Z, X to move the camera down, C to move the camera up. Cool, so I'm going to zoom back in and then I'm going to want to paint some forests so you might be asking how the hell do you do that? So you click on here the terrain texture paintings, you get the channel forest which you may have on something else but it's doubtful. 
So you just paint on the map where you want some forests. So I want to make my brush scale larger. And yeah, let's just start painting. So I want some forest on this bit. And say I want to create it regularly symmetrical, I'll create some forest on that bit. And it's loading procedural content, so you'll be like, where are my trees? But they are generating. And it kind of changes the ground texture as well to feel like a foresty feel, like raised twigs and branches and stuff like that. Oh, there we go. Got some forest going on, which seems to have generated with an edge, which is strange. I've not had that happen before. Uh, roundness? Mm, don't know. Ah, the opacity. Yep. So if you want, if your opacity was down, it would do that. So I'm gonna reduce that. I'm gonna paint in. You shouldn't get this because I've been playing with the settings, trying to figure out extra things. But now that I've done that, it should be generating the rest of the forest. Cool. So that's that at the moment. And yeah, train painting other. Not really too sure what's in there. Cool, so terrain forest painting, just different stuff really that you want to check out. So here in the prefab tab, this is where you'll find some prefabs that Creative Assembly have made themselves just to get going and obviously when they're making a map they're not wanting to create everything together so say like those rocks they'd have to keep putting up together and again and again to create these effects and features. So I'm going to want to go to Empire, which all these are based on the faction that is built around. So Protonia, Beastmen, Chaos, Empire, Goblins, Greenskins, Norska, and Vampire. So we've got some Empire Nature, so there's a, there's a Mountain Skull Bonfire if you want into one of those. Or you can go through the... Um, other prefabs by using the arrow keys and just have a look at what they are. You have to make sure that you still clicked on that for it to work. So here's a fountain, statues, little foresty bits and clusters and all that. Some rocks as well. Thorns, say if you wanted to build some other cool stuff. Rock's called Bonfire. So that's kind of all the prefabs that I've got of the Empire at the moment. Obviously there's other things as well that I'll show later on. So say I wanted to add some nature here in the middle, so I can pop that there. I can put some rocks in if I like. Don't want to put that in, but say, say I did. I could. So put some more Empire nature. So I've created a little bit of a, a feature there in the middle, I suppose. Then say I want to add some buildings, I'd go to the building tab and Empire tab if you wanted to keep it in scale, so you can have landscape, which I'm not too sure what that does. I think it will raise the landscape around it, but it's all got to be stuff that you've got to think that works. So city buildings. So there you go, you got some Empire-ish uh, buildings and stuff to do, so if I wanted to put a house in there I could. If I wanted to. Lots of different uh, building uh, things going on. To add some walls, you got that as well. Hero buildings, Empire Bridge. Okay, some bridge assets, all that kind of stuff. It's all stuff that you might want to see. Props, flags, and stuff like that, which are probably quite small. Yeah, quite small. Our street light. Yep, it's all all stuff that you can check out, I guess. Rural. So we are quite rural here. So let's put some generic houses and buildings in which you can rotate and stuff by using the azimuth or you can do later on by using the rotate option just dragging that around if you wanted so everything doesn't have to be perfect or say I wanted to move this I can move it around as well so it's all or what you want to do with it really switching to props so there's going to be a lot of props here say Yeah, there's going to be lots of different small props that you can add. It's all stuff for you to find out and look at yourself, I guess. Going through everything's going to take a very long time. 
Obviously there's visual effects which I wouldn't say I know which is going to be good or not because it's showing you like all the spells and all the stuff like that as well. That you may want to add in to make something interesting is always up to you. Cool. So you got vegetation. Yep, so you got logs and trees and stuff as well that you can add in if you like. Stumps. Say that they've built their little village around some stumps, why not? It's always up to do. Okay. So here's the point where you might be like, alright, I've made a simple map, I want to see it in the game. So what you'll want to do is export your map, which it'll probably ask you for a display name, so I'll call this um, Fields of Battle. Why not? Fields of Battle. Description, same, but also you can put a big description in. Author, of course it's me, Hex as a Hunter. You can also change the max players on each side, so you can make it a 4v4 map, and you click OK, and then I want to save the file as Fields of Battle, but you can't do any caps or anything, you might just have to do it like that. You can add underscores, yeah, so I could do Fields of Battle underscores to separate it out, press OK. OK, so it's actually told me that there's some project errors, which are clickable and checking out. But sometimes you'll get this and you might just have to think, okay, this rocks prefab is causing me a problem, so I will delete it. And hopefully it should have no more errors. Obviously we're still trying to process there. Cool. Right, so we're exporting. So I will come back at the end, edit the video together and show you what it looks like in game. Okay, so I've launched the game after the uh, map has exported successfully. Also, it tells you to activate the map as a mod in your mod launcher, so make sure you do that if you're doing it. Click your custom battle. Yeah, it's a 2v2. Might as well do a 2v2. I made it a 4v4 actually, didn't I? So you want to find the map that you created, so I called it Fields of Battle, so it'll be under F. There we go, Fields of Battle. Created by Haxel Hunter, it's got a mod icon. So, let's just say I want to keep this all in. Let's have a quick look at the uh, map on the battlefield. So obviously here you go, that's where it's put the deployment zones, which you can add in manually yourself also change the play area as well. So you don't need to sort all that, the game will kind of do it itself as well, so it can be helpful if you just want to have a go at uh, creating a simple battle map for people to enjoy. Obviously here we are, it looks like it spawned me right in that uh, little village area that I plopped in, but there you go, what are you going to do about it? Cool, so I'm going to put everything on the right flank, and yeah, I'm not doing anything special, it's just here, the map's there, blah blah blah, done. So you got the forest on here, I created, the hillscape, I painted on, forest on the other side, and the prefabs here as well. Obviously yeah, you can see that I can't click through it, and I shouldn't be able to walk through it either, but you can create your own no-go zones as well. I'm just going to speed this up, there's nothing, it's not, I'm not here to show you this amazing map that I just created. I'm just here to show you, like, what it might look like as you test the uh, battle, as you go through. So I'm not be able to walk past those trees, because they're all solid. I might break something on the way, yep, broke some things. But I shouldn't be able to walk through this house. Oh, well, okay, so I did. Right. Okay, so that is the map. I'll show you quickly how to fix that because it was something that took me a while to find out. Alright, so I'll see you back on the terrain editor. Okay, so here we are back on our terrain editor. I'm going to reopen our fields of battle that we just created. And you'll notice that there are some red lines around these prefabs that I created. 
uh, that I put in, should I say, that allow you to not go through, but the uh, houses I was able to walk through. But something that it took me a while to find out is you go to Tools, Entity Creation and Logical, Create No-Go Zone, so it's a point-to-point -point click, so I want to go around here. Obviously you can pan and go around without causing too much problem. There we go, I've locked a no-go zone for that one. Quickly create the other ones. And obviously you can do it through as well, so... Should mean that one's locked too. Good. I think everything else is okay, but I'll just put one around there just in case. Cool. So, that is that. Also show you quickly the play region and stuff, so that's also in the tools. And to creation logical, so I'll create the deployment zone. And I'll create a playable area. So I want to make sure we can play larger area than it gave us. So there we go. You click and drag, and then you click to finish, and that's your uh, playable area now. Cool. So, race re export that, and I'll show you again on the battle map. On the battle the game. Cool. See you soon. So, welcome back. We are here after I re-exported this Fields of Battle. As you can tell, the actual play area has changed, so that's quite cool. So let's go in and check it out again. So I just want to rush some units up to show you that I've now created it so you can't walk through those houses. So it's all just stuff that you'll want to keep going in and out of the game to check if what you're doing is working. Because you, you're probably unlikely to create a perfect map straight away. Obviously it creates a massive deployment zone which you can also edit yourself. Just didn't want to do it for the purpose of this video. So yeah, we're done. And now let's show you that my units cannot go through the houses. So obviously these are props so they can't go through them. The AI is calculating that they have to go through. Obviously you don't want to create too much difficulties for the AI, but as you can tell, they're not walking straight through there now. Oh, I do seem to be getting a slightly stuck, but that's my fault, not the game's fault. Or oh, Terry. So there you go. That is a simple map that I've created. Obviously you can see the bounds of the map have changed since I uh, created my no-go zone. Or oh, my, uh, my deployment playable area, should I say. Not the no-go zone. So yeah, that is that. Created a simple map. You won't see this on the terrain editor, but I hope to see uh, lots of your battles coming up onto the Steam Workshop. That's what I meant, not to terrain editor. But yeah, hopefully this will be helpful to you. If not, I wasn't really planning on having it as a full tutorial video because I'm not perfect. I'm just a content creator. I attempted to uh, have a go with it, so yeah. Hopefully... We can really see some awesome maps coming out from the community. I'm really looking forward to seeing what happens. But yeah, I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope you check this out. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.